Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. So this is our 10th session related to supply chain. And today we are not going to create any type of optimization models, but rather than that, we are going through some of the theoretical part of the supply chain so that we can able to connect ourselves with the supply chain. We can also able to understand that what is the supply chain and what is the objective of the supply chain. We can also able to get a clear picture that how we can improve the supply chain surplus, that is the profit of the supply chain by using some of the analytics, okay? So in this course, we are going to learn all those analytics to reduce your supply chain costs, okay? So let me start with, what is the supply chain? So a supply chain refers to the network of organization, resources, activities, and technologies involved in the production, distribution, and delivery of goods or services to the end customers. It encompasses all the processes and activities required to transform the raw materials into finished products and ensure their availability to consumers. Now, let me explain these statements one by one. So if you see, in the first statement, it has been mentioned that network of organizations and resources who are involved in the production, distribution, and delivery of goods or services to the end customers. Now, in this drawing, I have plotted a network, okay? First of all, the supplier, manufacturer, wholesaler, retailer, and to the end customer. So the entire thing is a part of the supply chain, okay? Now this network of organizations and the resources are involved in the production, distribution, and delivery of goods and services to the end customers. So I have explained these three statements as of now. Okay. Now what here is mentioned is it's saying that it encompasses all the processes and activities required to transform the raw materials into finished goods and ensure their availability to the consumers. So what happened from the supplier, we are going to get some raw materials or the component parts to the manufacturer, so supplier first of all send the raw materials or the components to the manufacturer. Manufacturer will turn that raw materials or the component parts into finished goods and send it to the wholesaler. Wholesaler will again sell that finished goods to the retailer. And retailer finally give the product to the customers as and when the demand comes. And that is why it's mentioned that it includes all the processes and the activities required to transform the raw materials into finished goods and serving it to the customers or the consumers. So basically, we are transforming the raw materials or the components into finished goods and are finally we are serving that finished goods to the customers. Okay. Now, there are three different type of flows in supply chain. So if you see, as I have mentioned here, the raw materials are coming from supplier to manufacturer, then manufacturer turn that raw materials into finished goods and send it to the wholesaler. Wholesaler again send that product to the retailer and retailer will again send that product to the customers, okay? So based on that, we can say the products are flowing from left to right. Products are flowing from left to right, okay? Now funds are flowing from right to left. What do you mean by this statement? Funds are flowing from right to left. The thing is like, when retailer, sell that product to the customer, customer is paying the money to the retailer. Retailer is keeping his part of share and sending and uh, giving the money back to the wholesaler. Wholesaler will again keep the share of his uh, part and give the remaining amount to the manufacturer. Manufacturer will give the amount to the supplier by keeping his part of share. So by this since we can mention or we can say the funds are flowing from right to left. Now the third flow is informations. So here I have mentioned informations are flowing in both directions. Why information is flowing in both directions? Suppose manufacturer wants some raw materials or the components from the supplier. So they are sending the information to the supplier. Now, supplier is sending information back to manufacturer by saying that we do not have the raw materials available as of now and it will take some time. So again, informations are flowing from supplier to the manufacturer from left to right. 
similarly we can give uh, some of the other examples as well customer place an order for a product to the retailer now retailer is placing the same order to the wholesaler wholesaler placing the same order to the manufacturer and manufacturer is placing the same order to the supplier for the raw materials now supplier is sending the information back to the manufacturer that uh, for that raw materials it will take at least 20 days of time manufacturer is saying uh, or giving the information back to the wholesaler that i can give you the material within 30 days because uh, after 20 days i will get the raw material and 10 days uh, it will take to uh, transform that raw materials into finished goods Wholesaler now sending that information back to the retailer saying that uh, we can execute the order, but it will take more or less around 31 days, 32 days, whatever it is. Okay. Retailer is giving the information back to the customer saying that within 35 days, uh, we can able to execute the order. So that means we can say the informations are flowing in both the directions from left to right, as well as from right to left. Now, sometimes it may happen that products are flowing from right to left and funds are flowing from left to right that means it is flowing in the reverse direction so initially i told you that products are flowing from left to right that is from here to here and funds are flowing from right to left now for some of the scenario it might happen that products are flowing from right to left and uh, funds are flowing from left to right okay so what is the example of those one example is the lpg cylinder which we also can refer as a circular supply chain. So what happened in a circular supply chain? For an example, if you take the uh, if you take uh, this example only, LPG cylinder, then we generally give our empty uh, cylinder to the agent and we generally take the fill cylinder from there. So that means we are giving something and we are taking back something. So that part we can consider as a part of a circular supply chain. Now, what are the objectives of the supply chain? The objectives of the supply chain are to maximize overall value generation. Now, what do we mean by value? For me, the value is I want the pizza in low cost. That means I am considering the cost as the most important thing which we can mention as a customer value for me. Now, suppose my friend, he wants the pizza in 30 minutes. So for him, the lead time is the most important thing and he will ignore the costing part. So for him, the customer value is the lead time. So that is why we have mentioned value may differ based on the customer choice. Okay. So what basically supply chain will, uh, will do, we need to see that whether our supply chain support that requirement or not. So as I said uh, to, uh, to you earlier that the customer value will differ from customer to customer or based, based on the customer choice. So we need to see that whether our supply chain support that customer value or not. Okay. Now, mathematical expression of the supply chain. Supply chain surplus. Supply chain surplus is nothing but the supply chain profit. Okay. So supply chain surplus equals to customer value. So customer value, I have already mentioned you earlier. In the, in the objectives of the supply chain, the customer value may differ based on the customer choices. Okay. So supply chain surplus equals to customer value minus supply chain cost. Now, one way to increase the customer value is to increase the product cost. Now, how you can increase the supply chain profit or the supply chain surplus? You can increase the supply chain surplus either by increasing the customer value or by reducing the supply chain cost. Right now, one way to increase the customer value is to increase the product cost. Now, repercussions will be if you increase the product cost, then definitely you are going to lose some of your customers who are cost sensitive. And another way to increase the supply chain surplus is what to reduce your supply chain cost. If you reduce your supply chain cost, then definitely your supply chain profit or the supply chain surplus will increase. Okay, now how you can reduce the supply chain cost? We can reduce the supply chain cost by using analytics. And that is why we are doing this course or learning this course. Okay, so if you use the analytics, if you build some of the optimization models, then definitely you are going to reduce the supply chain cost and thereby will increase the supply chain surplus. Okay, 